So in this next part, we're going to talk about misrepresentations of data. So this happens a lot, especially with fake news, um, marketing, when you're walking around and see like the ads, um, and anything that there's statistics. So the first example I have is a pie chart. And there's so many things wrong with this. But can you list a few? Well, the first thing I notice <laughs> is that red, the red slice is 25% and it's a fairly small wedge. And then I look at magenta, which is a bigger wedge than the red, but yet represents only 3%. So first I would notice that the wedges are not representative of the percentage, right? So the wedges for red and magenta are not represented correctly. Right, because 3% should be a smaller wedge than a wedge that's 25%. And in this, furthermore, now look at the wedges for blue and green. Blue and green are also 25%, yet larger than the red wedge. So we know the, red, the wedges, the percentages, are not representative, let's see, are not, I should say, the percents do not represent the sizes of the wedges. And this last one, I always, if we were in class, I give extra credit to students who find this one. Add up the percentages. Right. Do you see? It's So let's add them up. So 25 and 25 and 25, that's 75%. 75 plus 15 is 90. And 90 plus 3 is 93%. The entire total percentages should be 100% and it's not. So the total percentage is not 100%. So you can see that there's so many things wrong, right? Yet when you look at it, you just look at it and say, oh, blue and green had the most. But then you were like, wait a second, red was the same as blue and green and magenta was actually should be smaller than the red and then you start looking at it and this is why we do this chapter because this is exactly what's presented to you in social media and um in advertising and we just want you to just take one step closer like just look a little closer and see if you find any in, in um invalid statements right Okay, so that's one way where it's totally misrepresenting misre data completely. The other one, the next one is not a full misrepresentation, but it's presented not in the best way. So here are the two charts. They're the same exact data, but why do the bars on the left look different than the right if the data is all the same? So let's look at some differences here. The first difference I see is, of course, the tick marks on the frequency side, right? So we could say, okay, well, the tick marks are different. And notice the bars. Here is, um, what is this, 14, 1600, 1500, but notice here, it's smaller. They're both 1500, but they're small. It's smaller, right? 
Why? Well, notice because it's not a really good representation of the SAT scores. The maximum SAT scores is 2,400. So then, why would I make the tick marks up to 4,000? It doesn't even make sense. Well, I wasn't even paying attention. We're not in algebra. Stats is all about the target sample. We want to get close to our data as possible. So we would have to say that the difference here is that the scale Um, does not fit the data well in the chart on the left, right, on the right. Because the tick marks were different the scale on the right here didn't fit the data well, so we shouldn't have used it. So again, we always want to represent data with integrity. And that means, you know, find the perfect fit for that y-axis or that vertical axis so you could see and be close to the data and see and make a good conclusion. Okay.